Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today we're making glow-in-the-dark Halloween clear totes. I think this is a really fun project. I had an idea to make some clear Halloween tote bags and I was talking to my girlfriend Terry and she said, why don't you throw some glow sticks in there and that really upped the cuteness factor. So not only is it a safety feature that you know you're gonna see the little ones out in the dark, but it's also just super cute. The kids are gonna have a blast when their Halloween bag is lighting up and they can see all of their Halloween from the outside of the bag because it's made out of clear plastic. So here's what you need. I've got 12 gauge plastic. This you can get at Walmart, you can get it at Joann's. If you have some packaging from bedding, you can use that. But I have cut this to 21 inches long by 12 inches wide. So 21 inches long by 12 inches wide. You're going to need two pieces of fabric cut to 13 inches wide by eight inches long. So both pieces of fabric, 13 inches wide by eight inches long. And then you're going to need two pieces of fabric for your strap cut to four inches wide by, I cut mine to 18, but this is for Evie and she's very little still. So you might wanna make yours a little bit longer, maybe 18 by, Four is what I'm doing, so you might want to go 22 by four to make them a little bit longer. But you can do whatever you want, whatever works for you. Again, this is for Evie. She's probably three feet tall, so I didn't want to make this too long and have it dragging while she's walking. And then I've got, this is optional. You don't have to do this step, but I tried putting some stretch elastic in to hold the glow sticks and that worked pretty well. I just thought it would kind of hold the glow sticks up on the top of the bag so when they open it, the candy will be glowing and I thought they might find that kind of fun. So the other thing we're going to use is some double-sided adhesive, your iron and ironing surface. You're going to need all of that. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our handles. I've already prepared mine, but this is what you're going to work with. You're going to have two handles. They're gonna be four inches wide by whatever length you wanted. You're going to prepare them like I have. I put a little bit of interfacing along the long side, and then you're going to fold the short sides in just a little bit. And this is actually optional depending on how you're going to insert your handles. But the way I'm going to do it, I went ahead and folded the short ends in a half of an inch, and then I'm going to fold this in half lengthwise to establish where the center is. And then I'm going to fold those long ends into the center and again, these short ends are folded in. So then you're going to fold the long ends into the center, just like this and like this, and then fold the whole thing in half. We've done this a thousand times and you're going to stitch along both of the long edges. And again, this is for both handles. I've already done mine. Mine were cut to four by 18. I would recommend going four by 22 or so for a elementary grade school age. All right, next we're going to take our fabric panels and you're going to fold all of the edges in by about a half of an inch. You want the entire panel to be 12 inches long when you're finished. Here, you probably see it better if I put it over here on the ironing surface. I've got too much black going on here. There you go. I folded all of the edges in and pressed by a half of an inch, including the short edges. And now we're going to fold it in half, meeting those edges so everything's nice and even. And then you're going to press and crease it. You're going to do that to both of your fabric pieces. They should both be 12 inches long when you're finished and they should be about the same width as long as you folded them in about a half of an inch. Now we're going to take our plastic and if your plastic is sort of wrinkly and hard to work with, iron your surface, whatever that surface is, whether it's an ironing board or an ironing pad, and then just lay the plastic on top of that heat and that heat will one, make the plastic a little more pliable and it will take the wrinkles out. So that's a great tip when you're working with this plastic. You can see the steam is just instantly making this a lot more pliable and it's removing all of those wrinkles in my plastic. So it makes it a little bit easier to work with. So the next thing we're going to do is use our double-sided adhesive and I'll have this linked in the description below the video. I get this big roll off of Amazon and you're just going to place a piece of tape along that long edge. You can make it the entire 12 inch length. I'm just being stingy with it, but I'm just putting a piece right in the 
top edge of my plastic. This tape has a clear protective sheet on one side and it's sticky on the other. I'm going to add the tape to both sides of my plastic, just like this. And I'm leaving that protective sheet on one side. I'm gonna remove it off of this side. And now I'm going to take my fabric piece and I'm gonna use one of the open edges and I'm going to place the adhesive underneath. And I'm going to fold that fabric right down and secure it in place with that sticky adhesive. Now this isn't strong enough to be permanent, but it's strong enough to hold it in place while we stitch it. And this makes sewing with this plastic so much easier. Now we're going to flip it over and I'm going to remove that other piece of tape. And now we're going to take one of our handles and I'm going to measure over four inches. You can put the handle on just like this if you want to sew it, but I prefer to do it this way. So I'm going to measure four inches from the edge, one, two, three, and in that fourth square, I'm going to put the handle. So one, two, three, four, put the handle, make sure it's not twisted, measure over on the other one. One, two, three, four, and put your other handle down. And then you can go ahead and close that up and that tape should hold it into place. And now we're going to turn it around and do the exact same thing on this end. I'm going to put a tape on the front. And I'm going to flip it over and put the tape on the back. I'm going to grab my fabric, open it up. Remove the tape on the top and I'll line it up. And then fold that top down so that it is stuck to the tape. Make sure everything's lined up on your sides. Flip it over. Let's go in four inches, one, two, three, four. And four inches on the other side. Don't forget to remove that protective layer. And four inches on this side. Again, make sure your handle's not twisted. And your handle should be on the same side of the plastic as the other. Now, if you wanna put this elastic, I just took one piece, folded it in half, and again, these are cut to about two inches long. And this is optional. I didn't find that I really liked the look of it when it was finished, but if you want to do this, you can absolutely do this. I just thought this way, if the glow sticks fall out of the bag or fell um, loose, they would fall into the inside of the bag and it would kind of hold or put light on the candy when you opened the bag. But Again, I wasn't real crazy about it. I kind of just like throwing the glow sticks in with the candy. I think that's cuter. But you can see I just added those loops in there, added a piece of tape, and closed that back up. So we'll go ahead and add the loops on this side. And again, this tape isn't permanent, so you can just lift it back up if you want to do this step. I did it on one, and I didn't do it on the other. That's totally optional. And I used this yellow stretch elastic because my glow stick was yellow, so I thought it wouldn't show as much. So I'm just going to add another piece of tape over the top just to give the fabric something to stick to and fold that back down. Okay, so it should be looking like this. Both of your handles should be on the same side. You're going to go over to the sewing machine and stitch that right down the top edge, securing that elastic and your handles into place. So go ahead and take that over to the sewing machine, making sure both of your handles are facing up and stitch 
right along that top edge and you can back stitch over your handles if you want and this top edge so we've got our top stitched down and now i'm just going to push those handles back up and i'm going to stitch right along this top edge if you want to pin that down that's totally fine if you want to make sure and keep them straight but you're just going to lift that handle back up towards the outer edge and i'll just pin this into place just like so, just to keep it straight. This is a Halloween bag, so I'm really not worried about perfection, but we do want this to be cute. And I think this whole concept of the clear Halloween bag is so fun and the glow sticks on top of it. The kids are going to love this. I wish they were here so I could take photos, but we're gonna go ahead and pin all these down. And then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch right along the top edge. And again, you might wanna back stitch over those handles. All right, so it's looking like this. We're gonna turn it over so that our tabs are facing out and fold it in half just like this. Make sure that your fabric's lined up, the top of the bag's lined up. Fold your plastic in half if it's not behaving. Heat it up, heat up your ironing surface a little bit. And then you're going to take it over the sewing machine and stitch right along these long edges. Now, again, you can heat this up to make it a little more smooth. If you find when you're sewing on the sewing machine that it doesn't want to, the presser foot doesn't want to move over it, then put a little piece of tape sticky side up on the bottom of your presser foot and that will help the presser foot glide over the plastic. If it's sticking to the bed of your machine, just take a piece of paper like this and put it under there and then when you're st stitching, the paper will allow the, the plastic to move as you're stitching along that edge. So I'm going to stitch mine with a zigzag stitch. I think if you're gonna see the stitching, we might as well make it cute but you can use a straight stitch, whatever you want to use. This is a Halloween bag. Again, I'm not worried about perfection, but I think it's going to be really, really cute. Also, if you have a Teflon foot, this is a great time to use it. So take this over to the sewing machine and stitch along the two long edges. So I've stitched mine. You can see my zigzag stitches. I think it's really cute, but again, just use a straight stitch if that's what you want to use. That's totally fine. So you should be looking at the outside of the bag. I'm going to use a two inch square. If you don't have a two inch square template, just use a ruler, but I'm gonna mark a two inch square on the bottom corner using the edge as my corner or as my edges using the edge of the plastic. I have these templates in my shop. If you're interested, I'll have them linked in the video description below, but you can absolutely use a ruler if you don't have the templates. You're just going to mark a two inch square and then you're going to use your scissors and cut that square out. So here, let me just show you. If you, you know, have a ruler, just measure two inches over from the edge and two inches up, just like this, and then you'll make your square. So you don't have to have the templates. I just have them because I do a lot of box corners and I really like having a variety of sizes ready to go. It just makes it faster and easier. So once you clip out those two squares that you made, what you're going to do is open this up and I'm gonna kind of press the bottom just so that I can tell where the center is. So let me, just like this, just crease it a little bit so that I know where the center of the bottom is. You could also just mark this with a marker or a pen. And then I'm gonna open up this corner and I'm gonna mark, match the side seam with that bottom crease. I don't, it's kind of hard to show this since it's clear, but you've seen me box corners other times probably if you've been on this channel very long but basically you're just opening up that square and you're matching the bottom to the side and then you're going to pin it and you can see it better here in a second it's really really hard to photograph glow in the dark and clear vinyl projects so you can see there how i kind of pushed it together so then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing so here's our hole and we're matching up the side to the bottom and pressing it out like this. So hopefully you can see this a little bit better. And again, not worried about perfection. All right, so it looks like this when you're all done. 
So we're gonna take that over to the sewing machine and I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. You can use straight or zigzag and I'm just going to stitch right along those edges. All right, we're getting close to done. You can see I zigzagged right along those edges and now you're gonna turn this right side out. Now it's gonna rebel a little bit. It's gonna get crinkly. Again, use your heat and your heat surface to heat it up to make it a little bit easier to turn right side out and to make it a little more pliable. So just take a few seconds and then make sure that you press those or push those corners out that we just made, the box corners. I'm just making sure I have a nice square bottom. Once you've worked it all out, again, you can lay it on your heating surface and make everything smooth and unwrinkly. But basically, there's your clear Halloween bag. Isn't that cute? Now I went to the Dollar Tree and I found all kinds of glow sticks and balls and a whole assortment of different glow items. So I bought all different kinds. You could use any of these. You could mix and match them. There are a variety of different sizes, a variety of different colors. And I just think the more that's in the bag, the cuter. So this one is a, there's a glow stick inside this sponge. So you can, you crack the glow stick. If you're not familiar with these, you crack the glow stick kind of like this. Now you can see it's starting to glow and then you shake it up. And then you put it inside this tube and the whole tube glows. Now I was going to try to put this inside those elastic pieces and it's just a little bit too big for those. I ended up using a different one but that, that's an, one type of a glow stick. You can also just take the middles out, leave the foam part out, which is what I tried and ended up using for the inside of the bag. And I just slid them through the little loops. Now, obviously you could make this a little more permanent, but glow sticks usually only last a few hours and I didn't want to make something that we had to take apart. So that's why I decided to go with the fabric loops because you, when those go out, you can just put new ones in it next year or whatever you want to do if you want to reuse this. Now, if you're just going to use it one time, I would go ahead and sew them in there. But I think this is a really fun idea and it will, you know, it's another glow in the dark for the kids so that you can easily see them. The kids are going to have a blast. They're going to be able to see inside their candy bag from the inside and the outside because we've got this clear bag. We've got the glow sticks. So it's a safety factor and a really cute factor. I said at the beginning of the video, these were a little challenging to photograph to get a really good picture of how cute these are. But I think the kids are going to love them. And again, it's a safety factor and it's a cute factor. We've got the clear bag, they can see all their candy and we've got the glow in the dark for safety. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe and share. This is a really quick project and just something super fun for the kids. And if you make them, I would love it if you tag me on social media. See you guys. Bye-bye.